and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. In the sight of God, our Father. It's a God who sees. Amen? He sees it. Amen? But church, it's, it's that continuum, that, that without ceasing. Amen? There's that diligence, that careful, continuous work. It's not, it doesn't stop. And let me say this, church, it doesn't give up. Some people would tell you, you ought to stop. You ought to quit. What's the use? Amen? Why, why are you taking that? Amen? Why do you put up with that? Amen? You ever hear those lines? And sometimes you begin to hear those voices yourself. Amen? You, become, you begin to start minding those voices. Yeah, maybe they're right, church. This is a work of the Lord. And it is a labor of love, church. And I'm here to tell you, church, that we think about this. Jesus speaks about the parable of the sower. He sowed everywhere, didn't he? But church, out of all that sowing, church, there was really only one area where it produced faithfully. Amen? That good ground. But church, it's still a labor to getting that word out, church. And you might not see the fruit of your labors immediately. But then there comes a day, church, that you will receive of your labors. And I'm here to tell you, church, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is a work of love. Why do people do this? I know some different brothers, and Brother Patterson, for example, that he has gone overseas. I've gone with him a couple of times, but he has gone over numerous times, church. And I know, church, it's physically taxing on an individual. Amen? You have to put up with things you don't put up here in America. Amen? But then you kind of realize, why does he do that? And he's not doing it for the fame. He's not doing that for the fortune. There's no fortune there, church. Amen? You know what he's doing? He's doing it out of the love for God. Amen? He's doing it out of a love for God, church. And I'm telling you, that love of God, as Paul said, the love of God constrains me. The love of God just does a work in you that causes you to do what the natural man doesn't want to do, church. The labor of love. And I know one day, church, there will be a payday. <laughs> there will be a payday from God. Amen? There's going to be that great payday from God. I'm not looking to get gains from men in this world today, church, for my work for the Lord. I'm looking for God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, church. That's what it needs to be about, church. Don't look at man trying to recognize you, getting recognition from man, church. But ultimately, is look for that glorious day when he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Amen? I will make you ruler over many. Amen? Because you were faithful with what you got. Hallelujah, church. Praise God. Let's look at one more in this area here. Uh, let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 16. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Amen? That day, church, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain. Hallelujah. Neither labored in vain, church. That day of Christ, church. Hallelujah, church. I'm not discouraged. I'm heaven-bound, church. What I'm doing now, maybe some don't understand, church. But one day, one day, hallelujah, we're going to recognize that we have not run in vain. Our labor is not in vain in the Lord because we, back to 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 58, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain, church, in the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 again. Pick up another word out of there. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 6, 10. Thank you, Lord. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work. In labor of love, next part, which ye have shown towards his name. Which ye have shown towards his name. 
Amen. Let's go to Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17. Just have one, one verse to look at here, then we'll move to the next part. Colossians 3.17. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him, church. Amen? What's, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Church, when we have that mindset that whatever we do, we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I started thinking about that, and my wife can tell you just um, recently, we got a, I got a, a text message from some, some individual, and normally, and then we got a text message from another individual a few months earlier, or a month earlier. It's just, usually I don't hear from these people until they need something. Amen? And after a while, I, I know what they need. I mean, I know what they're going to be asking, I guess. First, it says, how are you doing? They start that way. I'm saying, I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing fine. And then next thing you, brother, can you give me? Okay? And then you do something. I pray about it and get say what to do, and I give. And the next thing you know, you might get a thank you. You might. And then you won't hear from that individual until there's another need. And it makes them, you want to feel like you just want to do something not good. <laughs> you want to just cut them off. Amen? But back to this verse, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, what does it say? Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen? We're going to see in a little bit. As you do this unto those, you did it unto me. Amen. Amen? We need to get that mindset, church. I know there's some people that are truly in need. Right. Not saying these people were not, church, but we need to realize when whatever we do, we need to do it as doing it unto Jesus. We need to be doing it into, in, in his name. And church, we know, church, if the Lord has need of something from us, if the Lord wants to use something in our lives, we would say, here it is. We need to treat people as we do it unto Jesus. Amen? Keep, keep that in mind as we get to this next part shortly here, church. But every individual, it's an opportunity. Whatever we do, do it in the name of the Lord. Do it as you represent Christ. Amen? Don't do it grudgingly. The Bible says, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Don't do it out of necessity. Well, I need to, I have to give it to him. I need to help him, church. You do it out of love. You do it because that's in you. Praise God, church. I'm telling you, we have these, my wife and I, not just us only, but others, we're faced with things like that. And as I just said here, just sometimes you're not getting thank yous by those you help. Sometimes you're investing a lot in people. And then all of a sudden, we heard the expression, they bite the hand that fed them. Amen? They treat you like you're the enemy. Amen? And you might say, what's the use? Amen? But no church, whatever you do, amen, you do it all, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't allow people that do you wrong to cause you to do evil. You do what is right. Don't let that change you, but you always should be provoking people to love under good works. Because I'm here to tell you, church, one day, Lord willing, God will get a hold of their hearts. Amen? And now their eyes will be open to start treating people right. Let me say this. The Bible says this. You reap what you sow. And what happens sometimes is these same individuals that have done you somewhat wrong, that happens to them. And then they come and tell you, you know what so-and-so did? You think in my mind, yes. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Amen. But you, you, you let your conversations always be seasoned with salt, with grace. Amen. 
Amen. With grace, seasoned with salt. Amen. Let that come out of your mouth, that you'll be sweet. That you, whatever you say, church, will, let me get somebody to say it and move on. We are salt and light in the world. Amen. We should, make it be, we should be making impacts wherever we go. Praise God. One more time, let's turn back to Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to finish up here shortly, church. Hebrews 6.10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown towards his name. Here you go. And that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Church, we are ministering to the saints. Amen? We, we, we minister to the lost, but we also minister to the saints. As I mentioned earlier, church, it, our desire is, is to, to present them perfect before the Lord. We care for them as our own soul. We care for the saints, that those that have turned from the Lord. We care for those. We care for the backslider. Amen? Let's look at a couple examples here as we get ready to close. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. You can read the whole account later, but I just picked this one verse. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of water only in the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. What would you read that verse for, uh, Pastor? God cares about the little things that you do unto others. Amen? Just that simple cup of water, amen, unto somebody that's thirsty. You didn't just pass them by. You didn't remember the bad that they did towards you. You still showed love unto them, amen? You're ministering. And not only that, church, especially, do good to all men, especially to them who are of the, what, household of faith, amen? Doing that, church. And... We need to treat, I know I say this, treating people fairly, treating people right, as ye would that men should do unto you, do you likewise. Amen? Praise God. Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Matthew 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And we know the account here is, When saw we naked? When, when saw we hungry? Amen? When saw we these things? As ye done it unto the least of these. When you do it unto my people, you do it as unto the Lord. If we have that mindset, church, whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. God sees. God won't forget the work, your labor, your labor of love, your work, your labor of love, what you, how you have done things unto his name. And also, lastly, as I just pointed out, as you minister it unto the saints. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's get ready to close in prayer. Dear Lord, you know our hearts. You know, Lord, what we have been doing. You know, you see, Lord. And I know at times, Lord, that we sometimes question, are we doing the right thing? Should we continue? But I pray that this message tonight will encourage those that hear and see whatever it might be, that they should continue the work of the Lord, for it is not in vain. We need to continue until the Lord says, come home, when the Lord says, it is finished. And I pray, Lord, in this hour, Lord, that you would touch this little church, you touch the laborers that are here, 
And even the laborers are few, Lord, but we pray the Lord of the harvest will send forth more laborers into the harvest field that we'll reach the lost. Lord, I know at times, God, it might just seem like you're just a few, but we stand upon your word where it says two or more are gathered together. In my name, there am I in the midst. And we stand upon that promise of your word. And I pray for these other churches that we fellowship with, that we know of, even the ones that we don't even know of, Lord, that they're holding on. They're striving. And I want to encourage them to remain faithful in the Lord to continue the work that God has started in their lives. It's a good work. And one day God's going to look down and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, I pray for your strength. I pray for your boldness. I pray, God, that we would, Lord, have ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking, for we'll always do what you have said to do, not what this world is saying to do. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all play with the heater. <laughs>